Hello. In today's video, we shall learn in detail about human digestive system. By the end of this video, you will have a clear understanding about the process of digestion in human beings. This is the second video of two-part video series on human digestive system. In the first part, we had learnt in detail about the various parts of human alimentary canal. If you haven't watched that video, I will leave a link of that video in the description box. Today, let us start with the introduction to digestion. The process of conversion of complex food substances to simple absorbable forms is called digestion. The human digestive system consists of the alimentary canal and the associated glands. The alimentary canal is divided into the following parts mouth, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine and anus. Digestion of food is accomplished by mechanical and chemical processes. Now we shall look into the digestion in the mouth. First step in digestion is intake of food or ingestion. Cutting and crushing the food is done by the teeth. The food gets mixed with the saliva secreted by the salivary glands. Teeth, tongue, palate surface and saliva help in masticating the food and mixing up the food thoroughly. Tongue and mucus in saliva together take part in lubricating and rolling up the moistened masticated food into small balls called bolus. Saliva contains enzyme, tylen or salivary amylase, mucin, lysozymes and electrolytes, sodium ions, chloride ions, potassium ions, bicarbonate ions. Tylen is a slightly acidic enzyme. It acts on starch and converts it into maltose, isomaltose and limit dextrins. 30% of starch is digested by salivary amylase. So, partial digestion of starch starts in the mouth. Water and mucin of saliva moisten the food for easy chewing. Lysozymes kill bacteria and other microorganisms. Bicarbonate ions neutralize acids in the food. No breakdown of proteins and lipids due to lack of proteolytic and lipolytic enzymes. The bolus is swallowed by the action of tongue and reaches the pharynx. The walls of the pharynx contract and push the bolus into esophagus. The phenomenon is called swallowing or deglutition. Peristalsis or rhythmic contraction of muscles of alimentary canal begins in esophagus. From here, the food reaches the stomach. Esophagus does not possess any digestive glands. It secretes mucus for lubrication of food. By the way, if you are getting some value out of this video, please like and share the video so that all of us can learn, unlearn and relearn together. 
Also, please consider subscribing the channel and press the bell icon to get instant notification of all the upcoming videos. Next is digestion in stomach. Stomach contains a number of microscopic gastric glands. They are stimulated by hormone gastrin secreted by pylorus. Gastric glands secrete gastric juice which contains proenzyme pepsinogen, hydrochloric acid, mucus and a weak enzyme gastric lipase along with Castle's intrinsic factor which is required for absorption of B12 in the small intestine. There are different types of gastric glands. They are cardiac glands which secrete alkaline mucus, pyloric glands which secrete alkaline mucus and fundic glands which have chief cells or peptic cells or zymogen cells which secrete proenzyme pepsinogen, prorenin and gastric lipase. Oxentic or parietal cells secrete hydrochloric acid and factor of castle. Goblet cells secrete mucus. Argentafin cells present in pyloric glands secrete gastrin. Let us look into the role of gastric juice in protein digestion. Gastric juice contains mucus, hydrochloric acid, pepsinogen, prorenin and gastric lipase. Mucus lubricates and protects gastric mucosa from the action of hydrochloric acid. HCL kills bacteria present in food, stops action of saliva and helps in softening of food. It converts pepsinogen into active pepsin and proenzyme prorenin into renin. Pepsinogen helps in digesting proteins and converting them into proteoses and peptones. Prorenin, which is activated by HCl to renin, converts casein into paracasein and then into calcium paracaseinate. Weak gastric lipase is inactivated and it has no role in the stomach. Next is digestion in small intestine. The bile from the liver, pancreatic juice from the pancreas and the intestinal juice from the intestine are the secretions released into the small intestine. They are all alkaline. Bile from the liver contains bile salts, sodium glycocholate and sodium taurocholate. The bile salts along with monoglycerides emulsify fat. They break down larger fat molecules into smaller particles. This helps to increase surface area for digestion. Let us learn about the role of pancreatic juice in digestion. Pancreatic juice contains inactive enzymes, trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, procarboxypeptidases, amylases, lipases, and nucleases. Starch with the help of pancreatic amylase is broken down into 
maltose, isomaltose and dextrin. Enzyme enterokinase converts proenzyme trypsinogen which is inactive into active trypsin and inactive dipeptides. Once trypsin is formed, it converts proteoses and peptones into peptides. It also converts inactive chymotrypsinogen into active chymotrypsin. Trypsin converts procarboxypeptidases into carboxypeptidase. The chymotrypsin formed converts proteins, peptones and proteoses into peptides. These peptides with the help of carboxypeptidases gets converted into dipeptides and amino acids. Pancreatic lipase acts on emulsified fats, breaking it into fatty acids, glycerol and monoglycerides. Ribonucleotides are formed from RNA by the action of ribonucleases. Similarly, deoxyribonucleotides are formed from DNA by the action of deoxyribonucleases. Next, we shall look into the intestinal juice in digestion. Intestinal juice is otherwise called succus entricus. Starch, in the presence of enzyme amylase, breaks up into maltose and isomaltose. Maltose, in the presence of enzyme maltase, forms two molecules of glucose. Sucrose, in the presence of enzyme sucrase forms glucose and fructose while lactose in the presence of enzyme lactase forms glucose and galactose. Enzyme peptidases breaks peptides into dipeptides and amino acids and the dipeptides with the help of enzyme dipeptidases form amino acids. Triglycerides, diglycerides and monoglycerides in the presence of enzyme lipase break up into fatty acids and glycerol. Nucleic acids are converted into nucleotides with the help of enzyme nucleases and these nucleotides in the presence of enzyme nucleophosphatase form nucleosides and phosphoric acid. The nucleosides with the help of enzyme nucleosidase form free nitrogen bases, purine, pyrimidine and pentose sugar. Fully digested alkaline emulsion of food is called chyle. Let us understand the method of absorption of food. Absorption of digested food mainly occurs in the small intestine with the help of villi. Absorption occurs by three methods. Passive absorption facilitated absorption and active absorption. Some water soluble molecules like electrolytes, glucose, etc. are absorbed along concentration gradient. This is known as simple diffusion. Osmosis is an example of passive absorption. Neither energy nor any carrier is required for it. 
In facilitated absorption, the membranes of the absorbing cells possess some permeases for allowing easy passage of materials. Some substances like fructose, amino acids are absorbed with the help of the carrier ions like sodium ion. Active absorption requires both carriers and expenditure of energy. It occurs in glucose, galactose, amino acids, fatty acids, monoglycerides, sodium ions, etc. Fatty substances are picked up by lacteal, while the rest pass into blood capillaries, which take the absorbed nutrients to liver through hepatic portal vein. Some of the nutrients are retained by liver while the rest are passed to the other parts of the body through blood. Fat directly passes to different body parts without first going to liver. The absorbed substances finally reach the tissues which utilize them for their various activities. This process is called assimilation. Next is the large intestine. The functions of large intestine are absorption of water and minerals and secretion of mucus which help in adhering the waste undigested particles together and lubricating it for an easy passage. The undigested and unabsorbed substances called feces enter into the cecum of the large intestine. It is temporarily stored in the rectum till defecation. The elimination of feces through the anus is called ejection or defecation. Let us summarize the digestion process in human digestive system. Salivary gland present in the mouth secrete digestive juice saliva. Saliva contains enzyme salivary amylase or tylen, which converts starch into maltose, isomaltose and limit dextrin. Gastric gland present in the stomach secrete gastric juice which contains pepsin, renin, hydrochloric acid. It acts on proteins converting it into peptides and peptones. Bile juice from the liver contains bile salts which break down large fat molecules into smaller fat molecules. This is known as emulsification of fats. Pancreatic juice from the pancreas secrete a number of enzymes. Enzyme trypsin converts proteins into amino acids. Amylase acts on starch converting it into disaccharides. Lipase converts triglycerides into monoglycerides and so on. Intestinal glands contain intestinal juice or succus entricus, which has a number of enzymes like amylase, maltase, sucrase, lactase, enterokinase, peptidases, phosphatase, lipase and many others. It is in the small intestine that the final end products of digestion namely glucose, amino acids, fatty acids and glycerol are formed. So today we have learned the process of digestion in human beings in detail. I have some practice questions for you. 
Please share your answers in the comment section below. You can pause the video and write down the questions if you like. Thank you so much for your time and participation. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider subscribing the channel and press the bell icon to get instant notification of all the upcoming videos. Also, if you want to discuss any particular topic in biology, please mention that in the comments section below. I'll see you there. Goodbye. All the best.